welcome along to this Wednesday's watercolour free lesson. Let's see how many of you are going to join me today. Let's wait until some of you join. Where are you all? Aha! There's one. I always forget that this is about 10 seconds behind. Let me just see who that is. It's my phone telling me that I'm live. How interesting. <laughs> so say hello, seven of you, 11 of you. Excellent. Okay. So we are going to be having some fun today with ink and watercolour. The perfect partnership. Just be cautious, guys, that if you're using an ink pen today, that you check first that it's water resistant. If it isn't, you're going to end up with an inky splodge on your page. Um, so this is the photo. I did put the photo reference up this morning. Apologies, I am running a bit behind. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Tracy. Pauline from Derby. Good to have you along. Um, it's so busy here at the moment. Obviously, in a couple of weeks, it's Christmas. And as well as my art business, we run an online wooden toys business on Not On The High Street. And it is crazy. I am working 16 to 18 hours a day at the moment. So if I look a bit jaded, you know why. Portishead. Hi, Kim. And Claire from Devon. Oh, Claire, I do love Devon. You get lots of these guys in Devon. <laughs> Brilliant. So 24, 25 of you. Great. So this is the guy that I painted before. And this was um, goes back to a class that I did back in the real world about a year ago, I think. Maybe just under. Maybe in January last year, just before all the lockdown things happened. I did a face-to-face -face class and we did this. And he sold. Um, so all I've got is this printout of him. Um, just to show you today and I did two versions I also did this one without the color blocks with lots of splashes so it's up to you on your painting today which one you're gonna go for whether you're gonna do splatters or if you like the look of this one with the color blocks so choices to be made now as I said at the beginning, it is important that your fine line of pen or Indian ink, if you use an Indian ink, that's good. You're good with Indian ink. You could use Indian ink and a dip pen. So that's another option. Bamboo dip pen I generally use with Indian ink. I haven't got my Indian ink out today. I'm using my fine liners. Um, these ones are Unipin. And I know they're water resistant. Derwent are also water resistant. If you're not sure, just test it down, put some water over it. I'm going to be using a 03 nib. I've also got a 05. I might use that in places as well. So two fine line ink pens. I have my whoops, 300 GSM watercolour paper stretched and taped to my board and I very lightly sketched out my seagull. I'll talk you through the sketching of him if you haven't sketched yours as I go over it with the fine liner pen as the things you should be thinking about when you start freehand drawing from a reference picture like this dude here. So let me just move him to one side. Very limited colour palette today. Um, I'm going to be using my um, high pigment watercolours by Artway. This is a set for those of you that haven't joined before. I sell on my website. Um, they're really strong pigment. You can see some of the colours look so dark that until they're wet, you don't know what they are. However, the box tells you. Okay, so on the back of the box is the names of the colours that come in that set and I love using these you don't need guys to go out and buy tons of watercolors in every color under the rainbow with this little set you can mix most colors that appear in nature and we're going to do a little bit of color mixing today as well what else can I tell you brushes I'm using my trusty size six baby one 
and size 12 watercolour brushes. Again, this is the set, Artway, that I sell on my website. So if you're looking for a good quality set of watercolour brushes at a low price, check these out. I have put a link to my shop in this um, event, so you can find the link there. There's a feature link. Just follow that and it will take you to my website, to the art product page. Um, along with the pads, colours, ink pens, it's all there. Okay, so how many have we got? 29. That's a poor turnout today. People don't like seagulls. Ah, well, I've got something nice planned for next week, so we shall see if we can attract a few more people to come and watch live. What's not to like? Watercolour Wednesday. One of my regulars hadn't um, shown up yet. I'm just going to check. I can see all the messages. Ah, there we go. Scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Who have we got? Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Lorna. Ruth. Where do you load the reference? It's on the event, Ruth. It's in the discussion on the event. Okay. Everything I post to do with this is in the event itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is ink over. Excuse my glasses. I left my glasses at home today. So I've got this old pair that are held together with a bit of sellotape. And they keep going wonky, so yeah, wasn't worth going all the way home again. So my 0.3 nib, and I'm just going to go over my sketch, okay? But when you're sketching, when I started sketching him this morning, I looked at his head first. Really look at that swoop of the head and get that top line in. And when you're inking over, now if you're if you're using a felt tip pen or a pen you're not sure is water resistant, don't ink until the end, okay? You can add your ink afterwards. I use the pen like a pencil. So I don't do any solid lines. It's all kind of sketchy. Coming round the head. So get that curve of the head. Always have your reference picture nearby. Hi Josie from Grey. CJ Smith's back again. Hi CJ from Scotland I believe. From memory. Okay, coming onto the beak. Get in that shape of the head. Look at the length of the beak compared to the head itself. It's almost the same length. Very long beak for catching those fish. And coming along the edge of the beak. And then look how rounded it is as it comes round and up. Bring his smile line in and then look at the shape under the beak. It's kind of an angular shape at that bottom bit of his bill and coming in. Once you've got that in you can join that line up and the bottom line up. So we have his head. Lots of seagulls, even inland from storms. Ah, I used to work um, in Brighton uh, quite a number of years ago. I used to travel down there. I live in Northampton. The head office is, was in Brighton. I used to stay over every week when I was visiting the head office. And I love the sound of the seagulls. You get used to them. Hi, Catherine Bullock. Oh, it's Catherine. Hi, Catherine. One of my regulars. Okay, so now I'm going to come down the neck and I'm looking at the curve of the neck this side and the bulge of the neck that side and they end pretty much the same place. The next thing you need to think about is that, that bulbous shape of his body, how round it looks, round with a bit of a flat bottom and look how far out from his beak and from his head it comes. So you could pencil in some lines if you wanted to, either side, pretty symmetrical our little bird today, and make sure that your bird's breast and belly come out to that position. You do get used to it, it's good to sketch, of course you can trace it, you can print it off and trace it down, there's no problem with you doing that it's up to you but the more this you sketch the better you will get at it so all the time i'm sketching i'm looking at these 
references, these shapes that will help me get things in the right place. I notice there's a little indentation on the breast this side and if I come across over from that, just below that's where the grey feathers start to taper off. We just loop those back. The other shape that's going to be good for me is this shape here between the wing and his back, pretty much like a triangle there. So another checkpoint for you to make sure you've got things in the right place, there or thereabouts. Coming down that wing, and we can just see the end of the wing under that side of his bottom. And we can also see his tail feather just sticking out here. Now, I love working with ink and watercolour. I just think it's a wonderful combination um, and they work so well together. A lot of my work um, relies on ink and watercolour. It's, it's a good medium to be if you're out and about sketching as well. Now, look at his kneecaps. Look how high up and close to his bottom the one on the left is. Okay. And coming down his skinny leg then it starts widening out just a little bit where we come to his claws and his webbed feet. He has got some webbing and his foot's just off the post. Now the claw, the second claw, the middle claw is facing towards us. So we have some foreshortening going on. We can't see much of that claw. We can just see this tip and then a little bump where the rest goes back. Come into the other side. And I'm using the ink pen to put the tip in. The little nail, the little claw, talon, in as well. The other leg, look, the kneecap's a bit lower. It's just the position of the bird. And also look where the bulge comes out on the left, a bit higher than the kneecap on the right, just slightly out of balance there. Come down those skinny little legs and again down to his claw. We've got that web stretching right across the edge of the wood there, the post, and this claw is right at the end. He's got another toe that's peeking out behind the wood okay gripping on keeping his balance so bring in that wood post it's at a nice jaunty little angle there we go so that's the main sketch I've missed something his eye of course look where the eye is positioned look how far down his head how far from his beak and use this beak as a guide as that line tapers off the eye starts. So all these clues are there in the photos. You just need to look for them. And then his eye, his eyeball, these glasses are terrible. If this all goes wrong, I'm blaming my glasses. Bring in his eyeball. There we go. And we've got this kind of shadow cast across his face. So that's the main outline. Oh, only 29 of you. Where is everybody today? We've normally got 60, 70 watching. I don't know. Okay, so that's that area taken care of. Now I want to use my fine liner to bring in some texture of the feathers. So this is the contour lines and now we're going to add some texture. Oops, I need to put his little nostril on his beak as well. Let's not forget that. Okay. So coming down, the, let's start at these wing, the wing here. Let me move that out of my way. Oh, 31 now, excellent. I'm going to be stroking up. Remember, use your pen like a pencil and just sketching up from the base of those grey wing feathers, add in some texture and the next layer. Just stroking that pen, lifting it off as you come up the page. Nice and sketchy, keep it loose. Just 
just get some marks, some sense of texture. And his head has quite a lot of texture. You look closely at that reference picture. My one's head's gone a little bit narrow, see? I'm just going to see if I can fix that. It needs to be a bit chunkier. So now I'm going to use some tiny little dashes to create that sense of feathers. Sorry, my head's come in shot. Coming round the back of his head. Just little dashes coming down the side of his neck. And coming around this eye area and sweeping around that shape of his face. They're tiny. I'm just going to zoom in a bit more for you guys. Bear with me one second. That's better, isn't it? You can see what I'm doing. Oh, it's wrong way. And down. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing. So tiny little dashes, and again along this area from the beak, just coming down under the chin where his face is going to be in shadow. And we're going to tackle that with paint as well. But this is allowing us not to have to worry about texture when we come to put the paint on. Angela from Telford. Your internet is iffy today. Oh no, CJ, that's no good. Okay, um, coming around then, there's less marks as we come down the side of his neck. Just little dashes, look. Just little dashes. Keep your eye on that reference picture where you see some texture. The top of his shoulder. Then his breast is pretty clean, albeit for some textural marks coming down. Now look at the direction of these marks. Angela from Telford. Lovely. I think I've already said hello. Okay, coming under here, look at the direction, look at the swoop. If I bring this painting back in, you'll be able to see. We've got a curve coming around the belly, so your marks need to follow those curves. So starting more sporadic up the top here, just marks here and there. And then we're going to get more dense as we come down under his belly. I'm actually going to cross some of these lines over each other. Let me show you on a large scale. So under his belly, I'm going to be doing this like big elongated kisses under the belly to create the look of feathers laying on top of each other. Don't let your lines go too long. Let's pop him back there so you can all see him. Yeah, as I say, if I'm if I'm going to post a reference picture or sometimes a line drawing, I just didn't have time to um, do that given the time of year it is. Um, then I post everything within the event itself. If you want to watch this video back later, you find it in the event. So big elongated kisses under the belly. And as I'm coming up the chest, I'm going back kind of from 12 o'clock to 7 o'clock. That kind of curve as we're following down that chest. He looks quite wonderful as he is. I can't see any tail feather lines, but I'm going to put some in because I'm sure they will be there. Then on to his knobbly knees, okay? The lines, his legs are curved, so we want to bring our marks, our textural marks. If you look closely at Seagull's legs, you can see like um, the, the lines, the marks, the skin texture coming across. And he's in shadow particularly on the right hand leg because he's cast in the shadow himself. The light's coming from here, from here. Um, so under here, we've got a darker side. So I'm just going to loop around. I'll show you that mark in big scale. This is his leg. We want to bring our marks from that left side and just slightly and pull them in and let them taper off. Not all the same length. Again, it's creating that curve and the texture of his leg. 
round we come, just pulling them in. Particularly around the knees, you can really see the marks around his knobbly knees. A little bit of a shadow on the top of his foot. So that's our bird done and ready, ready for some paint. Um, so it just leaves us with the wood to do. Really easy to get the wood texture. I'm actually going to add a little bit of an edge to this post as if I can just see the top of the post. It's not what's in the reference photo but I like to see just slightly an ellipse of the top of the post here. And now to get the texture of the wood I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to be pulling some lines through. Again make them sporadic they're not all going to be the same, quite long lines, some of them will be shorter. And every now and again we've got some knots in the wood. So we're just going to bring a circle in here and there. Let's have another knot up here. So I'm bringing that circle, putting a dark spot in the middle, and then I'm going to come round and away and down and then go back to my straight lines. Let's put another knot, I think there's one around here. Just scribbling away to fill that knot, the dark spot in. Coming down. And as some of these cracks in this old piece of post are going to be deeper than others. And the post on the left, remember, is in shadow, but we're going to deal with that with the watercolour paints. Just add in another knot there. I want these cracks to start right at the top of this post. So I'm putting a bit more ink down in some of these lines at the top there. There we go. And that's your ink pretty much done in place, ready for the watercolours. Other than one last thing, and we've got this wire going across the post okay it's coming actually in front of the post so i'm just going to take the line get the shape across the post and over the other side i'm going to make it into some kind of barbed wire and if you look really closely into this one i did before it just looks like a bit of barbed wire so again back to kisses i'm just going to do a fine line of kisses along that wire down we go crossing over the post it's coming in front of the post it's not joined either side like you'd expect it's actually coming in front tiny little crosses quite a lot of ink down here now of course if you wanted to you don't have to use either of the um, options that I've done with your seagull. So just as a reminder, this is the one that I, I sold and I did the class on back in January. Um, so this is a printout of it. So we've got these blocks of colour just sitting behind the bird. It's quite a modern look. Hi Pip! Um, and then the other one that I did, I just did water splashes, which is real fun, just flicking up the water. So it's up to you which one you go for. As I've still got this one that I've not sold, I'm going to go back and do this one, I think, today. But, or you could combine the two. Why not? Alternatively, just go for what you see in the reference photo and just put a blue sky in. OK, now we need to let that ink just seep into the paper, although the pen is water resistant. Just give it a moment. Just soak into the paper, just in case. There we go. So I have my trusty mixing palette, two cups of water, which you can't see because I'm hiding them. Let me move this all over, make sure I've got everything in shot, get rid of all the things I don't need. So my two brushes, my mixing palette and my colours. Now when I'm looking at this reference photo, I'm seeing some lovely 
yellowy, a little bit of orangey colours in the bird's belly here. Maybe catching the reflection from his beautiful bright beak, I'm not sure, but they're the colours that I see. I did him quite bright in this one and a bit more muted in this one. So I'm going to go for the more muted look. And we are going to be working wet in wet. Okay, so start light, work dark. I'm going to add some water to my mixing well. And I'm going to use yellow ochre. Not too much. Always have a spare bit of paper to test it down, nice and weak. Remember, this is going to dry darker, uh, lighter, darker too. I'm going to start by wetting his chest area. So from the neck, coming down just clean water over our bird, avoiding the wing, focusing on this belly, his undercarriage up around the wing. I'll be back in one second. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to come in with this yellow ochre. Just dropping in. Those of you that have followed my classes will be used to me saying, drop it in. I'm just pulling it. I'm dropping the colour where I want it and then dragging it around his belly. I don't want to come too far down the underside because we're going to be putting some blues and greys here and yellow and blue will make green and we'll end up with a green seagull. Okay, let's mix some of the greys then. Now if you have this set at home, you will have Payne's Grey. It comes in the set. This one should be Payne's Grey, I think. This one. No, this one. <laughs> This one's Payne's Grey, which is a bluey, dark, sort of neutral colour. But if you don't have Payne's Grey, you don't have access to the discussion. You should still be able to see the discussion roof. I'll, I'll check that afterwards. Um, obviously, I can't do anything right now, but um, if you're going to paint later, I'll make sure um, I post the seagull again. So if you don't have paint today, we're going to mix it. Add some water to your well. We're going to go with ultramarine blue. Start your puddle with ultramarine blue. Grey, mixing grey with watercolours. We don't use white and I don't use black. So to mix grey is blue and brown. But you really want a real true blue. Not a greeny blue because that has yellow in it. It'll give you a total different effect. And now I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna, my brown, it's a ready brown, doesn't matter which brown you use. And there we go, we have our grey. So this is drying on me, so I need to be quick. I'm going to start coming in with a very light version of the grey into the water that we've put down on the page. I need to leave a thin line down here. I need to be cautious of that because there's a highlight on the left hand side of his belly. I'm just going to soak some of that grey up because I forgot about it. So take a, if you do that too, take a clean dry brush, just pull it through, it will soak up that paint. So this very light wash to start with of Payne's Grey that we've mixed or that you've got, adding it over the yellow in places and then just pulling it around. That's our base. And just let it mix here. I'm actually going to also add a bit more ultramarine blue to my mix. I'm going to make it much bluer, very light still. I want a bit more of a bluey tint over this side. It's just a little bit more blue tapping it on and then just manoeuvring it with the tip of my brush and when I look at my bird I can see on the left side the shadow side just add in a bit of bluey grey as we go up his neck very light colours 
I'm just going to go back to my yellow ochre. I'm going to add a little bit more, just a touch more, a bit more colour. I'm kind of accentuating what's in the reference photo, just making it a bit stronger, a bit warmer. And particularly for the camera so you guys can see it too. Now we need to start making his belly darker, the shadows underneath. So you're going to mix the same colour again or just use your Payne's Grey if you have it. Ultramarine blue. We want to make our puddle much creamier now. So I'm adding more pigment to that puddle. Ultramarine and then a touch of brown. In my case, burnt um, sienna. Burnt umber is another good alternative. Now that's gone a little bit too grey, I want a bit more blue. There we go, a nice inky grey blue colour. Now, this is where I am just going to touch in. Tip of the brush, drop, touch the paper, put in the shadow area very much on the very tip of my brush. When you apply paint like this and just let it sit on wet and wet and you touch down and lift off, you're depositing a small puddle of strong paint, strong pigment. Whereas if you brush it, you're pulling it around and you're thinning it so it won't be so strong. So coming along that side, remember I want to keep a line of highlight next to his wing. I want to add a little bit of red. Why not? And I'm going to go for crimson. And I'm just going to drop a little bit. I can see these orangey hues. Maybe it's just my eyes, but I can see them. Drop the crimson on, and then I'm using the tip of the brush to manipulate and move it. Let it mix with that yellow. I'm going to add a bit more yellow over the top to orange it down a bit more. Just playing with those colours. And where the crimson's going to touch with the blue, with the greys, you're going to get more of a lavender, hopefully. There we go. So you're getting a hint of red, lavendery colours coming under his belly there. So I really need to focus on this triangle shape underneath i'm just going to go creamier still thicker paint it's not going to move as far when you add thicker paint it stays where you put it more wet into wet i want to darken i'm making them a bit darker than i did previously just a bit more color under his belly there we go now remember, if you do too much and you think, oh my god, I've ruined it, just use some tissue and dab down and lift off or use your brush to lift back out. Just touch down with a dry brush and it will lift the colour out. But let it dry back. You'll see it dries lighter. Okay, I'm going to come up to his head now. We're doing him in sections. We're going to come round his head, avoiding the eye ball itself. Coming down his neck, don't wet the beak, just the head. Now this time I'm seeing more blues in his face, more bluey greys. So I'm going to use my other blue, which is um, az azurite, sorry, azurite blue. It's a more tealy colour, more of, sort of the colour you'd use for water. I want it nice and light watered down i'm just going to add a bit of this lovely blue around his head in fact whilst i've got that blue i'm going to drop some in his body too just to pull it together leaving the left side this bright section here just dragging out, I'm just lifting out a bit of colour from under his head, around his chest, just lifting out with a damp brush. 
just want a bit more of a highlight there i'm getting carried away today guys what can i say maybe it's because christmas is coming <laughs> so just bring in a highlight back through clean brush drag it through lift out i'm going to go back into my nice creamy dark gray just add in a bit more blue and brown to the mix and I'm going to take him darker around the eye. Now I don't want it to spread too far. That's why I'm going creamy with the paint. Just drop in that shadow around the eye. Oh, you're welcome, CJ. I like to um, explain as best I can what I'm doing and how you control it. And having that thicker paint, um, working wet in wet, will stop it traveling and getting out of control i'm also going to take this color under his beak and just a touch on the tip of the brush just pulling that around creating that shadow area under his neck there i think my one looks more like an eagle <laughs> okay now we've got a bit of a waiting game going on guys because we can't paint anywhere where this is still wet. I want to do his wing. We can do the wing, actually. If you've left a gap between his belly and his wing, you'll be okay. If not, avoid it and come back to it when it's dry. To be safe, let's go down to the wood. I'm going to do something a bit strange, you may think. But I'm seeing some greeny hues in this post. So I'm going to mix up some ultramarine blue. lovely beautiful ultramarine blue with some lemon yellow or cadmium yellow whichever you've got I want this to be quite bright citrusy citrusy green I'm going to take this green very strangely all over the post it just gives it that lovely watery green mossy look to the wood just take it all over your post to start with Taking another layer, I want it a bit greener, so I'm just going over it again. Then we can start bringing the woody colours into play. So I'm going to start with some yellow ochre. I'm making a puddle with it, but I don't want it too watery. I'm going to bring some yellow ochre down. Mix it over the green. Just pulling down from the top. Then we're going to go into the browns. So I'm adding my burnt sienna, this lovely orangey sienna. Actually, that's quite red. I'm going to mix it with some yellow ochre. Just to make it a bit more of a sandy colour. And again... We're going to just take that in places. Let some of the green show through. Don't obliterate the green. Just pulling down that post. Leaving some highlights of green showing through. We're going to get progressively darker. So we've got our puddle here of our Payne's Grey. I'm going to add a bit more brown to that puddle. Creamy, quite creamy. Brown, blue, brown, blue, but you want it more on the brown side. So you're biased on the brown this time, guys. Just keep adding it a tiny bit at a time till you get it where you want it. There we go. And again, just choosing some areas just to pull some of this color down, but mainly on this left side where it's in shadow. Just adding that colour and pulling it about, dragging it with the tip of the brush. Okay. We're going to go darker again. Down this left side. 
just dropping in I've just added some more blue to that brown to make it a bit more grey make it a bit darker I'm just pulling that through and again let's find some sections over on the left where you just want to pop some of that stronger colour in now I may want to take that darker still if I do I'm just going to drop some blue straight over the brown straight from the pan over the brown on that left edge to really darken it there we go the only thing I want to, left to do here guys is to bring some highlights back into the wood so I'm going to take my dry brush just damp I'm just going to run it through pick up some colour wipe it off on your tissue straight away clean your brush dry it off come through slowly lift off some colour now of course you can also go back and do this afterwards once your paint is dried you can lift out watercolour when it's wet like this to give a more natural look or you can wait till it's dry and lift out when it's wet what's going to happen is it's going to keep trying to feed back in through the damp paper here we go just a bit more highlight so that's our wood let's go back up to our bird we're nearly done guys quite a quick one today for you um, I'm going to go to his beak next his lovely beak I'm going to go in with my yellow creamy and strong let's pop my glasses on um, actually I'm going to go down to size 6 be safe pick up that yellow nice and creamy his beak is really strong I'm just going to turn my board around so I can get a good angle bring that over his beak now this lemon yellow I'm using is a bit bright cadmium yellow would be better but never fear I'm going to go in with some cadmium red just a tiny bit particularly under his beak drop in some cadmium red into that yellow and also on the top tiny bit of red not too much I just want to be able to mix this to change the colour of that yellow and make it a bit warmer tiny tiny fleck of paint and just brush it over the top allow it to mix in I'm going to do his eye now as well I'm just checking his face is dry yes we've got a nice bright yellow eye really strong creamy paint straight from the pan or straight from the tube drop it into the eye now I'm going to have to bring his pupil back once that yellow has dried just tidying up the edge there so we've got his eye now we want his legs I'm loving his belly I'm loving the dark under here keep an eye on it because sometimes you may want to add some more actually let's do his wing next so we want our nice light grey clean that dirty brush out remember the combination ultramarine blue I want this grey to be more blue again so just a little bit of brown we're going to take that all over his wing leaving a highlight on the right hand side and down to his towel now we're going to thicken it again nice thick paint oh thanks Deb I try my best <laughs> Natasha you had a sneak peek oh naughty girl you should be working so I want a real strong Payne's grey now so I'm going into the corner of the pan picking up some blue and some brown if you're using tubes same thing go neat test the colour first though guys that's too brown end on the blue if you're going for a bluey grey there we go that's what I want 
tiny bit on the tip of my brush coming into the tips of the wings drop that color in along that edge just touch down leave it for a second clean your brush and we're going to pull that color up the wing so we're going to come from that puddle that we've deposited and stretch it and pull it up the wing okay control again a way to control your watercolors drop the paint on strong and then use what you've put on I keep drying my brush off and pull in and that is the technique it's called pulling no surprise does what it says on the tin so we get that really dark area there on the edge of his um, feathers and I'm also going to add some more shadow under his bottom under the edge of his wing there my paints are jumping around today have you noticed they keep they're very sticky these paints the high pigment ones um, are much shinier than a normal pan that you would use you can see how shiny they are um, it's because they're made with gum arabic or sometimes i've got some that are made with honey um, and they have this shine it's a completely different texture to normal pans so artist quality high pigment i think they're seven pound fifty on my site so not expensive and now i'm just going to do the same just drop in along his towel this darker bluey gray mix it's already wet so it's going to start seeping down you can encourage it and pull it along so we have a nice contrast between his belly and his towel that's in shadow so all that leaves us with guys and I'll be leaving you today is his eyeball seems to have come back but I will go over it with my ink pen and his legs um, for his legs I'm going to use crimson That's definitely far too bright for us though, isn't it? And we want a nice fleshy colour for his legs. So crimson, and I'm going to put in a little bit of yellow ochre to create this orangey pink. Remember, we don't use white, so you cannot do pink with um, red and white. Why don't we use white? Because white will make your paint opaque. And the beautiful thing about watercolours is its luminosity. So you start adding white and suddenly you're, you're, you might as well be painting with poster paint or gouache. So I'm just coming down, adding a hint of this pinky colour to the left side of his leg. And then I'm just going to add some water to the right side. Just clean water. So colour on the left side, clean water on the right and just let it migrate across that color will seep into where you've added the water and if you need to add a stronger color to define the shadow side of his leg wait until it dries they're so they're so skinny if you add more pigment now it's just going to flood over so wait for that to dry if you feel you need a bit more of this stronger pink color just come back in so his feet are darker than his legs so i've just added another element another pigment a bit more actually i've just taken a little bit more of that crimson and dropped in his feet i just want them a bit more ready hue I'm moving that around with the tip of the brush okay i'm just going to grab the hair dryer guys because we're going to do the background if you're going to do splatters let me show you the splatters first if you're going to do splatters I can find my brush. Oh goodness. Ah, here it is. So I have this stibbling brush, stencil brush, or a toothbrush works really well. Let me just put my seagull somewhere safe so I don't splatter him. So if you want to do the splatters, I would recommend more of that oceany blue if you've got it as you write in this instance maybe a mix use your dark blue and some azurite blue 
what tape um i use low tack masking tape i buy it from amazon it's by a brand called bracket b-r-a-c-k-i-t brack kit um it only comes in 10 rolls but it's really low tack and it doesn't tear your paper okay so just loading up my brush with this colour and then you would hold your brush, this is hard to do for camera, hold your brush with the handle away from you, with brushes towards you, and this is where you get mucky, and just flick, pull back the bristles and let go, pull back the bristles and let go, and you get that wonderful splatter of the ocean. As I say, you could mix your colours, take a dark blue over the top, and that's how you would create that movement and that splutter of water driving up as a wave's crashing. If you're going to go for the other option, where has he gone? This one. Then we just want to block in. So I'm just going to give him a quick dry. Okay. The key of doing these blocks, guys, is mixing up enough paint that you don't run out. So here we go. I'm going to mix up that really nice dark bluey grey to have behind him, like I did before. Brown, same mixture. Nice inky colour. And it's going to make him stand out as opposed to him just sitting against the white of the paper. I'm literally going to come around him. Be careful as you come up to the edge. Use the tip of your brush to come carefully around your bird. I've used a slightly different colour. I think I used the bluey colour last time. This time I'm going for a Payne's Grey. Coming up and just creating that shape. Now be careful. I don't want you crying because your paint's gone in the bird so use your tip of the brush to come around that edge and then just create the shape that you want to sit behind him and look how he pops forward i'm just going to come around the other side so i don't go over the edge of my bird bring the point of the brush Lay it flat on the page, drag that on. But your bird needs to be dry, otherwise he's just going to blend out. So I'm just going wet on dry, I'm not pre-wetting the paper. That dark splash of colour behind him. And then I'm going to go definitely cadmium red this lovely orangey red and actually I'm going to add to it 26 of you still with me it's been a quiet class today everyone's Christmas shopping do you think or they don't like seagulls okay next week guys I'm thinking of doing an old door or a window with flowers and plants growing up it's the same thing I'm just taking this beautiful rich vibrant red either side of the post just gives it a really modern look as I saw so the one that I did before this one sold pretty much the day I did it's actually a lady um, I used to what share some art space with in Wellingborough near here and she runs a, a come and paint on pottery fabulous place and people just go and paint and she just loved the seagull so she bought it I think for her son or something so just taking that lovely strong red into the bottom and of course don't forget to sign your work so the only thing I would say is this side because I'm a bit of a perfectionist even though this is just a demo I want it right so I'm just going to darken this side, my bird, a bit more blue, 
I do actually prefer this colour than the one I used last time. I guess the colour I used last time is more sea-like, but I think this really dark blue makes him pop out better. There we go. There we have. Look how it makes him come forward. Oh, you found the photo, Christine. Excellent. An old door. Yes, you fancy the old door. Um, yeah, I think some an old barn door or something. Or, you know, when you're in some Mediterranean countries and you come across a beautiful blue door, green door, um, with plants and pots outside, I think we'll do that. So I'll work on that for next week. CJ, you're welcome. You're going to do the replay. Thank you. I'll work on getting a good reference photo for that. An old door sounds good. Excellent. That's it then. Deal done. You guys help me make that decision. So thank you once again for joining. Please share um, with your friends and family what I'm doing here every Wednesday. If you can and you like the look of a paid for lesson, of course I'd love you to join those too. And support me whatever way you can so I can keep bringing you these classes every Wednesday. Christmas Day is on Friday this year, so I'm okay. <laughs> oh, Wednesday's your favourite day. Fabulous. And also, just an update. I know I've mentioned this before. These books, I'm down to about 30 books and 12 kits. So if you've bought one, thank you so much. Um, it's my first watercolour paint book. So I'm delighted that I've sold nearly 200 of them. So the last few remain. Again, follow the link to my website um, if you want to grab a last minute bargain for your Christmas stockings. So thanks everybody. Enjoy the rest of your day, whether you're at work or you're on furlough or you're just painting along at home. And please share with me the paintings of your seagulls. I would love to see them. See you again soon. Bye now.